Yes, good morning, everyone. So we're off to a great start with soil scan this year. Our ALP continue to look good compared to labs. And we have over 120 folks signed up for our 360 soil scan certification program. And we'll be shipping out round one of those soil kits next week. So you can expect those coming if you've signed up for the program. Now to help kick off the beginning of the season, I wanted to cover a few items on the maintenance and troubleshooting of these sensors. We'll go to the first slide here. And first off, we want to make sure that your sensor is prepped and ready to go. The most important step is to plan a bit ahead as a nitrate sensor needs some time to soak. So give yourself at least an hour lead time before you want to start testing. First, you're going to remove the small storage bottles from the sensor and fill the four-chamber calibration bottle with standard solution. And then place the calibration bottle on the sensor, sensor shelf and let the sensor soak for a minimum of one hour. If you know you're going to be testing the next day, you can let those sensors soak overnight. This step is extremely important for good results, so make sure that you give your sensors time to soak in that standard solution. Secondly, make sure that you've downloaded our most recent software update. We've got version 2.01 listed on this slide, but I found out yesterday that we have version 2.02 .02 available in the App Store right now. We're continuously adding features and enhancing checks behind the scenes, so this benefits both you and our product support team if you have any questions about your sensors. I do want to address one of our most common product support calls, and that's loose sensors. This tends to happen when you remove the small storage bottles. The red reference electrode, if you look over up above here, it's slightly larger, which makes removing that bottle a little more work. And because the storage bottle comes off harder, it loosens the sensor. So just double check in this area up here um, to make sure that it's screwed on tightly. Then we've reduced the diameter on our next batch of electrodes, so the bottle should go on and off a lot easier. And I also want to point out that occasionally we'll get a call on the bottom of the reference electrode that slides down a little bit. If you look down here, you can see that this one is about 1 16th of an inch down. This was a manufacturing issue, which has been resolved. The sensor will still calibrate and read properly, like this, but if you see it starting to slide out or if it comes out altogether, let us know and we'll be happy to send you a free replacement. Now, if you're seeing multiple error messages like the one we have on the screen here, such as this during calibration or testing, make sure that you go through these spot checks above and recalibrate. We give the option to continue, but I would recommend recalibration if this happens often. Otherwise, you'll have the calibration issue, and you may end up seeing incredibly high readings, such as we see on the right-hand side with the 500 ppm. And generally, I see that 500 ppm number when we have multiple sensor errors, when our calibration number is off a little bit, or when the bottle has been left off, and then it's been put back on late, too. Now, if you can't solve the issue troubleshooting, you can go into our diagnostics page. We have this under the settings tab. And from here, you can email the file to support where we have it circled, where it says email diagnostic file to support there. This is going to send us the behind the scenes record of what's going on with your machine. When you do email it, make sure to include your name, your contact information, and a brief description about what is happening and the problem that you have. So if you look over here, there's a lot of information going on on this page. We have sensors one, two, three, and four. You can see sensor four there tells us that the nitrate sensor is in and that we have a calibration of 0.971. You also see the pH sensor up above and that's a zero calibration. And normally when those sensors are loose and unscrewed, that's where we see a zero calibration. So you can go back and check for that sensor to make sure it's screwed in again. So the current app version 2 is also listed right here. So between the app version and the sensor calibration, if you call in um, our product support, these are one of the first questions that we'll have for you. Moving on to sensor storage. Now, there are two ways to store your sensors and your soil scan. The first is short term, which is anything less than 24 hours. 
All you need to do with this is let the sensors soak in the calibration bottle. So if it's a Thursday night and you know that you're going to be testing on a Friday, go ahead and just leave those in the standard solution and you don't have to worry about anything with them. Now for the long-term storage, which is anything more than a day, you want to use the small storage bottles. These are identified with the sensor name, as you can see in the picture, and how to store them. Now it's important to remember that the nitrate sensor, which is the gray sensor, stores dry. All you have to do is slip on the cap and the bottle and tighten the cap into place on the sensor body. Now the red reference electrode and also the pH sensor, which is black if you have that one, those are going to store wet. So you're going to want to fill up that little bottle with standard solution about three quarters full and then slide the cap into place and the bottle onto the sensor body and then tighten it up so it doesn't slide back off. Now also remember to store your soil scan inside at room temperature. Don't let the machine or the sensors sit in an extreme environment such as the inside of your truck cab on a hot August day. A good rule of thumb we use is to, follow, or is to treat your soil scan and your sensors how you treat your iPad. So if you bring your iPad in for the day, bring in your soil scan too and keep it out of the elements. So this has been a quick summary of the basic practice practice tips to follow to make sure that you have good results. 